Learn Excel from Mr. Excel Podcast, episode 2378. Define your own linked data types, version one. Hey, welcome back to the Mr. Excel Netcast. I'm Bill John. There's a great story about how we got here today. It was back in August 2018, uh, episode 2227, when I talked about the new stocks and geography data types. So you start with cells that contain cities here on the data tab, mark them as geography. Uh, you get a little map icon there. You can click on the map icon to see information about that city. Uh, but even better is you can add new data to the grid, like equal n2.population, or just use this insert uh, data and get all that information, right? And there were even cool things, like if your data was stored as a table, you could come in here and say that you wanted to uh, choose a field that isn't in the grid, for example, state and province and then filter out the Oklahoma cities, right? It was a beautiful thing. And I remember uh, I was on the road doing live Excel power seminars. I would always demo this and I'd ask the audience, you know, hey, what do you think they should do next, right? And almost universally, every single seminar, someone said exchange rates and someone else said weather, right? But then after a few seminars, I got the usual answers, ex exchange rates and weather. And then someone said, no, no, no. I think you should let us define our own. <laughs> I laughed. I was like, oh, well, that's never going to happen. But I came home from the seminar. I wrote to the Excel team. I said, I know this sounds crazy, but they wanted to find their own. And the Excel team said, yeah, we think they should be able to define their own too. So imagine that the data types team was split out into three sub teams. One went to work on exchange rates. One went to work on weather and one went to work on define your own. And the exchange rates team, it was quick. March 23rd, 2019, episode 2274. Hey, they have exchange rates and they were clever. They changed the stock data source, the, the people that, that power this uh, to someone that do exchange rates. So bam, you know, success. They were able to very quickly get us exchange rates. Um, and that was beautiful. That was in March of 2019. And then August of 2020, uh, they introduced the Wolfram Alpha data types, right? Which just raised the bar on data types tremendously. The data card could now be resized. You could drill down in the data card. Uh, they support a hierarchy. Uh, you can even return a photo to the grid and they can return an array. So here I have Houston, rather than say geography, I'll come down here and say location. And then in the card, I can scroll all the way down to the bottom, open weather, click on the icon here and the card changes. It can be weather history weather history and I could use daily or weekly. Let's just put in daily weather history and get the uh, mean temperature all the way down. All right. And that's in Celsius. All right. Beautiful. So the second one is done. Now the third one, define your own. When I started talking about this feature and how cool this feature would be, I said, you'd probably have the IT department define a product catalog. I can select a range of cells that would contain an SKU. And then up here, you'd be able to define this as, you know, our company item list. Uh, and then I could do equal A2 dot category, equal A2 dot description, equal A2 dot list price. You maybe even get an image in the grid, uh, you know, hover and see the card, filter and sort using fields not displayed. All right. Well, hey, great news. It's now here and they've done it. They didn't do it the way that I would have done it. Um, in fact, we don't have to rely on the IT department. Anyone using Power Query can define their own data types. Hey, that's, that's awesome. Um, the thing I'm a little bit disappointed in is I can't select a range of cells then that contain an SKU and convert to our company items, right? Which to me, that's, that was sort of important, but I can do formulas like equal a two dot category, a two dot description, and I can't get an image in the grid and that's okay because when this team started on define your own, the second team hadn't given us a way to get the image in the grid, right? That's a relatively new feature. And so I get it. Give these people time to catch up to what these people did. We can hover and see the card, uh, filter and sort using fields not displayed. You know, and now that I've seen it, now that I've seen it, I said like, oh, hey, you know, using Power Query, I have to bring the data types into a, a worksheet in the grid. Don't make me do that. Just let me make it be a connection only. Um, and yeah, I really need to select a range of cells that contain the SKU and convert. Uh, that, that to me is really important. Use XLOOKUP to retrieve data from the data type and uh, go ahead and hook up that, the feature where we can get an image of the product in the grid. I'm probably never going to use it, but there'll be people, there'll be people who want to use that. So, you know, 
as I think about a metaphor, if I had asked the Excel team for a, a sports car, you know, I, I would specify that I wanted a 12 cylinder engine, zero to 160 miles an hour in 4.1 seconds, a keyless starter, I want to have to put the key in, 12 speaker sound system, mahogany dashboard, 18 airbags, anti theft system. And then what they gave me is even better, right? It's 16 cylinder engine. But when they got to the second one, they said, yeah, there's not a keyless starting system. In fact, there's not even a starter. We're, we're just releasing this right now because it is a kick-ass speaker system. You sit in the car and listen to the radio, right? It, and and the mahogany dashboard's not done yet, uh, but it's even better airbags and anti-theft system than, than you wanted, right? And you'll enjoy that experience. Let's think about the way that Microsoft used to release Excel. It would come out every three years or so. And basically, it was a three-year development cycle. So in the first year, they'd be thinking about ideas. Second year, they'd actually build those. And then third year, they would test them. If the test failed, if, they, if it wasn't working, you would have to wait another three years for the thing to come out. And it's much better now with Microsoft 365 because there's a release every Tuesday. As soon as the feature has some useful parts, they can release it. Let people try it. Let people come up with more ideas that will shape the future of the feature. It, it's a better way to go. They keep working on the feature. And, you know, if they release a feature that doesn't have everything well, on another Tuesday, not next Tuesday, but some other Tuesday, those new features will come out. So the old Bill, this, this video would be, what? You built a sports car and there's no way to actually start it? But today, uh, you know, I get it. It took a whole bunch of under the, work, under the hood work to get to this point. Um, they have every intention of putting in a starter and letting us drive this car. Uh, and there are useful features in this V1. Uh, that we did not have before. So there are use cases here uh, that some specific users will absolutely love. All right, so let's start over. Learn Excel from Mr. Excel Podcast, episode 2378. Create amazing expandable fields so your data isn't too wide all the time. Hey, welcome back to Mr. Excel Netcast. I'm Bill Jellen, a great new feature from the Data Types team. You know, a long time ago, back in 1988, 1989, I actually worked in the IT department for a couple of years. And then I left IT and I went and worked in accounting and finance. Uh, and it was interesting to see both sides of that struggle between IT and the other departments. Uh, so today I have a fictitious IT department who's given me 110,000 rows of this store ID, date, product, cust ID, and quantity. You know, I hate this product ID. I understand why the IT department stores as a product. Uh, product ID rather than give the, the description that I actually need and the customer name that I actually need and the store name that I actually need. This is a nice tight way to, to provide the data. And IT offers me three different workbooks with lookup tables for product, customer, and store. And, you know, you've heard me say before, there's two kinds of people in the world. Those who can do VLOOKUPs, XLOOKUP, index and match, pick your poison, I don't care. And those who can't, right? So if you give that 110,000 rows to someone who can do these lookups, yeah, they're fine. They're, they can run their own reports, but there's a lot of people uh, who can't, right? So the, the IT department, uh, and I love when the IT department uses the word user. It's never a positive uh, word that users. It really should just be those darn users. Uh, and the IT people, I can, you know, there's a meeting in IT and they say, oh, those users. Sometimes they need data from all the lookup tables and they can't do VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, INDEX, and MATCH. So someone says, well, let's build a super wide view with every field from every lookup table. That way, they won't have to bother us to add more fields in the future. All right? And that's how we head down this path. Now, here's the plan. We're going to do all this using Power Query. Um, from uh, the sales workbook, I'm going to create a connection only, and then stores, products, customers, a connection only, and then merge and merge and merge and end up with a data set that is this wide. When I started this video, my plan was to do one of those freaky time-lapse things where everything happens at 10x the normal speed, but I decided I'm going to turn off the video and I'm going to go do this. There's other videos I have that would show you how to do these things, and that's not the point for today. I'll be right back. All right, time warp. There we have uh, sales, customers, stores, products, the first merge, the second merge, and then we're taking that last merge and we're merging with customers. Choose Cust ID, Cust ID is left join, click OK. And out here for customers, I'm going to bring in all the fields except for the cust ID. We already have that one. And don't use original column name as a prefix. Click OK. And there we have now an insanely 
insanely wide data set. If I would return this back to the grid, um, it's just going to be terrible. It's going to go you know, way too wide. People are going to hate it. Uh, and this is where this great new feature uh, comes in. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to collapse these fields down. Uh, so I have a lot of information here about stores. So I'm going to take store ID uh, and control click on selling square feet, mall developer, store name, the era, when was the store uh, first built, and what region are they in. I think that's all of my information for stores. And out on the transform tab, this great new feature called create a data type. Create a data type. So I choose those fields, go to create data type. Uh, we'll take a look at advanced and the data type name is going to be called store. And what I want to display, I don't really want the store ID. I actually want the store name. Give me something useful. Give me a way to get the store ID if I need it. Um, but uh, give me store name and store ID selling the, all of those fields because I pre-selected them are going to be there. And what's going to happen is those fields are going to get collapsed down into a single column with a great new icon there that says that we have a data type called store. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing for product and customer. So I choose the, the product ID and then description, price, author, publisher, and format, create a data type. This is going to be called products. And I'm going to display the description instead of the product ID. In advance, we can see that all the fields I selected are already there, so it would have been fine just to do basic. And now we have store and products. Finally, customer through zip code. Those fields are all related as, as well as customer ID, create data type. Uh, this will be called customer. And the display column will be called customer. I wonder if that's going to be a problem. Click OK. All right, so now we have date, oh, customer.1, customer.1. All right, so uh, let's come in here and we'll call it customers. Click OK. All right. So we have date, quantity, customer, store, and product. We can reorder these. And then when I home, close, and load, this will now bring all 110,000 rows right to our grid. All right. There we are. It all fits on one screen. How cool is that? I have date. I have quantity. I have the customer information. I have what store they purchased from and what product they purchased. And I can still come in here, uh, go to the icon, show card, and get the item ID, the price, the author, the publisher, uh, and what format it was. So if I would want to, this is a table, I could come in here and look for format and format to only the things that are DVDs. Click OK and very quickly it filters uh, using that field that doesn't have to be displayed in the grid. If I would want to calculate revenue, uh, then I need the uh, product list price. So we'll add a field here of price and then I can calculate revenue of equal price times quantity. Double click and copy that down. So I can still do calculations in the data. If I need to look at customer, I can get that information. Can I get a picture of the customer? No, that's not hooked up yet. So, boy, I really would love for a way to have this defined as a connection only and be able to apply it to other data sets. But that's just not there yet. And that's okay because some Tuesday it will be there. All right? This is a great first step. A lot of under the hood here to make this work. The other things that I love is that I can use filter, equal filter, and the data that comes over is going to have the data type. So that means I can continue to extract information. Um, XLOOKUP isn't working as well as I want it to look, but it is working. I'll hopefully show that in the next video. Um, you know, the last 37 days have taught me that when you get everything that you ask for, or almost everything you ask for, you, you really can't complain, right? They gave us exchange rates quickly. They gave us weather. 
and now that they've really started you know a long way towards to find your own and and I know they'll get the rest of the way there um, I'm really encouraged by by this it's not quite as easy as I, as I wanted it to be uh, but it is a tremendous tremendous step and just you know a sign that the Excel team is listening to their customers and 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 reacting right yeah so there you have it an amazing expandable fields uh, using the new custom data types through Power Query. I, I love it and, and I can't wait for it to get better. Hey, if you like these videos, please down below click like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Feel free to post any questions or comments down in the comments below. I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another netcast from Mr. Excel.